In today's video, we're going to check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. What's under Antarctica? We don't know yet, but there's evidence that there's a really big crater under the ice in Antarctica. What about the bottom of the oceans, which is almost three quarters of the planetary surface? For every one that's going to hit the ground on land, there's going to be three that hit the ocean. And so now you have marine geologists who are reevaluating evidence for large scale tsunamis that have made land fall and thinking that some of those are too big to have been formed by undersea volcanic eruptions and may be the result of a half kilometer or kilometer wide object plunging into the ocean that's moving 20 miles per second. The events like Tunguska that don't leave a lasting impression are way more abundant than the ones that dig holes in the ground. So if you're just counting holes in the ground or scars in the surface of the earth itself, you're going to be undercounting. So we're kind of in a position now of reevaluating just how many times perhaps we have been affected in the past. It is pretty interesting. I would love to know what's under Antarctica. If we could just see what is under all the ice and all that landmass, I'm sure there are some pretty crazy things that are just like really great discoveries. Why don't we have solar powered cars? It seems like an intuitive move, but charging your car from the solar panels on your roof or a nearby solar farm is very different than it coming directly from your car. When sunlight hits the earth, it scatters. So the light you get on a very specific surface area is actually pretty limited. About 340 watts on 10 square feet. Or one Marriott bathroom. The average size car in the US could get about 10 times that, but then solar panels aren't that efficient in the first place. Utilizing only about 20% of the solar energy they receive and converting that into electricity. So that 3,000-ish watts turns into something more like 600. And electric cars need about 20,000 to use the highway. There's also the issue of driving at night or on cloudy days, so you'll need a bigger battery to store power for these days. But a bigger battery means more weight, and more weight means more energy. Kind of reminds you of the rocket equation. However, there are fully solar-powered cars. There's actually a competition in Australia every two years where teams have to drive almost 2,000 miles on purely solar energy energy. And they're so weirdly designed to utilize as much surface area as possible. There are designs in the works for consumers, but beyond powering the air conditioner or adding 40 miles of range, they're just not efficient enough to be the sole source of power. Hey, I mean, 40 miles of range is not that bad in considering that most electric vehicles get 300, maybe 400 miles of range. So saying that you get 40 miles of range on something that charges itself completely, that's not too bad in my opinion. Depending on how much it costs though, that's the other thing. But this is a pretty cool concept. I've always wondered if we were going to move this route where we'll just have completely solar powered vehicles. But like this individual said, that's not necessarily the most efficient. But what if we had a way to turn our roads into solar panels that charged our vehicles while we were driving on the roads? It's kind of a crazy concept, but I could see something like that happening. If you look at Google Sky right now on the computer and look down on Antarctica, you'll find research bases from every major country in the world there. And you'll also find the Rockefeller Foundation base as well. Admiral Byrd was right. Number one place in the world for technology research is right down there in Antarctica. I believe that as the ice is melting, they're finding remnants of an ancient civilization. We know that Antarctica was not a frozen tundra for 12 million years. Like mainstream science says 12 million years to build up all this ice. No, 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 that's not accurate. We know this because of the Perry Reese map. The Perry Reese map shows Antarctica, what it looked like without ice on it. Antarctica shifted into that spot. How? Because we know that Antarctica is surrounded by tectonic plates. There was something called a pole shift of the crust of the earth, which shifted it from a more habitable climate into the position it is now. And that's why the animals that are being uncovered from the ice were flash frozen with undigested food in their stomachs. And there's an entire advanced civilization there, including some of the largest pyramids on earth. What do you guys think about this claim that there's all these research facilities at Antarctica, Antarctica is thawing out, they're finding ancient technology. I really like to believe that there's probably ancient technology in Antarctica. And who's to say maybe it froze because of the technology that the people of the past created. It's a really cool theory to think about. All over the world, holding a pine cone and a handbag, some ancient symbols that are really weird. These symbols, these hieroglyphics and like carvings on stones and stuff of these ancient civilizations. You see these symbols 
exactly the same. Beckley, Tepe. You see it there with the handbags. That, that vulture stone that we're talking about, the one that lines up with the stars. Yeah. There's yeah. three handbags up top. Wow. And then you see in ancient Egypt, uh, Mesopotamia, ancient Greece, the Balkans, the Americas. You see it in the, the Olmec, the Toltec, and the Mayans. Wow. All these carvings, they're always carrying a handbag. So that's the Sumerians talk about God-like people mm. that came to earth and gave us all this knowledge that even like created us. Giant beings that are carved holding these pine cones are always pointing the pine cone towards man. And they believe that the pine cone is representing the transfer of knowledge, mm. transfer of knowledge of the creation of life and of human enlightenment. And then the handbag represents uh, the knowledge of tools needed to create godlike people fallen angels whatever to these represent the tools to create these things got it so the pine cone and the purse are symbolism for knowledge and wisdom and that's pretty interesting i do see a lot of these old carvings where they're holding the handbag and have what looks to be a pine cone i have a couple of theories about this my own self not necessarily that I don't believe in it or believe what these individuals are saying, but the theory that I think is, what if they were just bags? We have bags today. It might have been a very common piece of equipment that a lot of people used back in the past because it's very handy to have a bag to hold all your stuff in. That's kind of a theory that I have on my own. It's not anything about wisdom or intelligence or anything like that it's just literally a handbag and everybody carried them because it was just really convenient the pine cone what if that was just a snack from the bag you know like they're just like oh delicious and pine cone i don't know that's kind of where my mind goes when i do see that what do you guys think about the pine cone and the handbag do you think that it's a deeper meaning or do you think that maybe it's a more simplified meaning if so let me know what your reasoning is because i'm curious about it i'm sorry but what is happening next week no <laughs> so as i'm sure a lot of you are aware next monday april the 8th there is the next total eclipse which is going to be visible all across the US. But that's not the only thing that's happening on April the 8th. Now, scientists have also got some crazy warnings for April the 8th, which I'll come back to later. But there's actually a lot of other stuff going on on that day. Now, I'm not going to speak about a lot of them, but this one is insane. So the LHC, which is the largest and most powerful particle collider in the entire world. Now, this is going to be running some tests on April the 8th, which could shatter the universe. So on April 8th, this accelerator is set to smash protons together to search for invisible particles powering our galaxy. Now, there are theories out there that suggest there are over 17 different particle groups, and the nuclear research group known as CERN did confirm one back in 2012 when they used this thing. And now, of course, the team has restarted the LHC with the hopes of finding more things about the universe, specifically dark matter. So yeah, next Monday, while the solar eclipse is happening, this particle accelerator will be trying to find dark matter, essentially. Oh, and also, did I mention, one wrong move by CERN, one wrong thing, could open a wormhole and destroy the Earth. It could, like, it actually could. So yeah, all of the scientists have been warning about April 8th. High-ranking officials, scientists, government saying, be prepared, it's gonna be bad. But it's just a solar eclipse. Maybe they know a bit more, because they know these tests are happening. Who knows what could actually happen? But yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're just gonna run some tests, and we're gonna find some dark matter. That could be cool. But yeah, make sure you hit that follow button, and I will keep you updated. Not much longer, only four more days, and it'll be time for the eclipse here in America. And I'll be really curious to see what all happens, because this is a big talk. A lot of people are talking about this. Honestly, it's getting really hard to find good videos, because everyone is just talking about this specifically so it's kind of challenging right now to find good creepy tiktok videos to watch i am curious i'm kind of excited to see the outcome whether it be good or bad we'll find out when the time comes i personally think that the eclipse is going to happen nothing super major is going to happen outside of the norm of what's already been happening in the world all the crazy stuff but nothing crazy crazy is going to happen nothing world ending i don't think is going to happen during the eclipse well we'll find out i'm i'm here for it i got my seat belt buckled up do you have any certain theories as to what is going to happen during the eclipse and possibly after let's take a guess and see what the next big conspiracy will be what do you guys think will be happening after the eclipse if all goes well and the world doesn't end all right so that was a whole rug that we just had to pull up. There's a second rug underneath that. This thing is massive. 
it's probably, I don't know, six feet by eight feet or something along those lines. And it's all in this back corner where we were digging earlier. It's just two massive rugs again. We just pulled all that up. There's that rug that was on top of this one. We have to pull this up. And like I said earlier, there's, there's boards and chain under it. I don't know what the fuck is happening back here. Dang, that's pretty cool. I would actually be really excited to find something like that in my yard. I would think that maybe it was just an old building that got knocked down and this is the left remains of it, but it could be a number of different things. And who knows, there might be something even further down into the ground, like a cellar or a basement of some sort. Who knows? This one would be pretty fun to find out. The history of Jekyll Island is a little scary. So there's a tribe of Native Americans that used to live there. And the first settlers that came to Georgia were French, and they saw these Native Americans, and they reported them as being, they were almost all seven foot plus. Wow. And they witnessed them doing blood sacrifices by killing small people. Oh, goodness. It freaked the French out, and in the middle of the night, they're like, we gotta get out of here. And after they just witnessed all this stuff. Yeah, but it's like, like, am I going to be next? Jekyll Island, I think that was like where all the crazy stuff happened. Yeah. The Timakua ended up getting disease and stuff because of the colonizers the and white whatnot. Man. The white man. Yes. And uh, years and years later, the Rockefellers came down and they said, we want to build our summer homes here. Mm. Um, and each house had the name of a... Native American or a Timakua chief, which is super strange, kind of, you know? Yeah. Dang. So the Rockefellers moved to where they were doing these blood rituals. I wonder if they're actually still practicing these blood rituals today, depending on what the blood rituals were doing and what they were for, because it didn't really say what the blood rituals were for. They were just saying that they were doing it to little people. But there could be reasons why the Rockefellers did that, if this is true. Let me know your thoughts on why they moved there and what their main motive could have been, if not just taking over the land because they felt like it. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and watching, thank you so much for that. Yesterday I had an idea of coming up with some kind of way to interact with the viewers and I think we boiled it down to questions for DK. I really like this concept. I think a lot of people are on the same page and a lot of people actually commented on my video yesterday letting me know, hey, it's a good idea. And they even sent me some questions. I have like 10 or 15 questions that I could utilize because of this concept. I'm not going to do it in this video or probably the next, but maybe the one after that because I want to let them build up. And we're going to start reading off comments that you guys ask me personally, whether it's personal questions or questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general so stay tuned for that because i think that it's going to be pretty fun and again if any of you want to participate in questions for dk the the comment has to start off with questions for dk if you use those keywords, i can search those words up in youtube and it will pull up all the comments that have those key phrases in them so the illuminati has made its way to tiktok in literally the craziest way imaginable this story is so eerie and you just have to hear it for yourself about 10 minutes ago my boyfriend and i are leaving my apartment complex in his truck and at the same time that we're leaving, we see a lady driving in and we look over and she's taking pictures of us. So my boyfriend's the type of guy where he's not just going to be like, that was weird. So he instantly goes in reverse and she takes off. So she's driving down the complex and then we're following her and she parks. So I go right up to her window and I knock on it and I go, roll your window down. And she's going, no. So she rolls it down and I go, were you taking pictures of us? And immediately she's like, no, this is what's going on. And she grabs her phone and she's like shaking, like trembling. You can't even look at her phone. She's shaking so much. So she goes, I'm being stalked and followed. And she pulls out her phone and she starts showing me her camera roll. And her whole camera roll is like zoomed in pictures of like random cars. And she goes, the elite sent people after me. She's like, sent people after me. 
She goes, I was on trial for O.J. Simpson, and she starts showing me pictures in a courtroom, zoomed in pictures of O.J. Simpson. She, her passenger seat has piles of, like, documents, like, redacted, like, statements and stuff like that, like, court documents. It's like, the Illuminati is real. She's like, you're young. You probably know the Illuminati is real. She's like, no one's believing me. Everybody that I tell thinks I'm, cr I'm crazy. And she's like, no one believes me. And she's like, and I need help. The comments of this were a mix of different ideas. Some people said, girl, now they know that you're on to them. You've become a prime target. While others said, it sounds like she was just telling you that you are being stalked by the Illuminati. And even more say that the most rational explanation is that this woman is delusional and none of this is true. But I thought this was a creepy video nonetheless. What do you guys think? Stay spooky, friends. Dang, it sounds like a bad case of gang stalking. And this lady, she was either extremely paranoid or she was being seriously followed. And I really think that gang stalking should be addressed more because I think that that's happening a lot more than what normal people think that it does. I, for one, never even knew about gang stalking until later last year or earlier this year is when I really first started hearing about gang stalking because I never heard of that before and I think that goes for a lot of people I, I think that this could be a case of gang stalking and I think a lot of people are not quite aware of it so just be aware people might be out there following you watching you making you go crazy not necessarily doing anything to you personally but driving you mentally insane be aware of that because that could be a really serious thing that people don't know about and are going through even. Seen this video of this guy right here yet? People say she kidnapped him. Who has the best girlfriend ever? I do. Who just bought you all this stuff? She did. And all the stuff? My girl bought all of it and I'm about to eat this. And then we're going to chow on that after. So, a happy mm. Easter. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not eating at all. Just know that. Because we got to save some. Yeah. You know? Budget cuts, you know? <laughs> happy Easter. Save, save, save. You know? So, we're going to scoff this stuff down. Cause, Relax. Because Boo deserved it. <laughs> you know? Even though we get in our arguments sometimes, I still love you, okay? I love you too. Yeah. I love you too, baby. Yeah, you, you better. <laughs> so I just spent some money on you, yeah. <laughs>Dang, I kind of felt captured watching that. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really think that this individual is kidnapped. I think that maybe they are stony baloneyed and they're about to chow down on some Chinese food, but I don't know. I didn't really get the full sense of this individual is kidnapped and he is in trouble. I just think that maybe they were a little lifted. Let me explain what tensor rings are. You take a piece of metal, and usually they use the Egyptian cubit length, perhaps. It's not a random length. It's a specific length that has energetic properties. And you have uh, two copper wires. And you twist them at a 45-degree angle. So you attach that to the wall, and you attach this to a drill, turn the drill on slowly, and then it twists the two wires together at a 45 degree angle. And then you bend it into a circle and you braise it shut, you weld it shut. People wear tensor rings on their wrist, single tensor rings. The fancy ones are they take two or three rings, lock them into each other, and then you can create different shapes by twisting them around and you just set them on the table and they give off good energy. It's like, it's another form of uh, creating energy like orgone generators. I really enjoy this individual's content. A lot of people ask me about him in the comments, even though I have links in the description for each video that we watch. This individual, his username is Ascension Tools on TikTok. There will be a link in the description again. He has an amazing, amazing products. Whether they work or not, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not going to guarantee it. But he does have a lot of products that are really good energizing products that help your mood, uh, organite pyramids that help you sleep better, give you more dreams, make you feel better, think more positive, things like that. 
Very awesome individual in my opinion. Now, some that I did not know about because I am very interested in this type of stuff like the Organite generator, the tensor rings, everything like that. I'm super interested in. One thing I did not know is that it has to be a specific length. That was new to me and that makes more sense because that fits in with sacred geometry, which I'm a big fan of that as well. I'm kind of a believer in sacred geometry because I do think that there is certain shapes out there that can help gather energy more efficiently than most. But nonetheless, very awesome individual. Check out his store. He's got amazing stuff and it's all handmade and it looks amazing. I think by now it's safe to say that we have all heard about this right? That Walmart is supposedly going to make you be a Walmart Plus member to access the self-checkout. And obviously, we all agree that this is bullshit. But I have a theory, and I haven't heard anyone talk about it yet. So let's run through it. Stick with me. It might get a little bit long, but I would love to know your thoughts at the end. Okay, so if you sign up for Walmart Plus, you're going to get free delivery on groceries, which is usually same day, on orders over $35, which it's 2024. That's what, like, four items, but you'll also get free shipping with no minimum on other items. Now, if I'm a Walmart Plus member and I have to be in order to use the self-checkout, but I get free delivery on everything without even having to leave my house, then why would I go into the store at all? And that brings me to my theory. So what I think is that Walmart is trying to transition away from their traditional retail model into an online only delivery model a la Amazon. And I know what you're gonna say. Well, why would they wanna do that? Especially when their retail stores make them a ton of money. One, it would save a ton of money on overhead costs, you know, light, keeping the lights on in the stores, right? They would also be able to drastically reduce the number of employees. But wait, they would still need employees to get the orders ready and make the deliveries, right? Yes, however, Walmart also has Spark. And if you don't know, Spark is Walmart's version of Instacart or DoorDash, where you sign up to be a driver, right? And you accept the offers through the app, you go and shop that person's order and then deliver it to their house. So the thing about being a Spark driver is that you are not a W-2 employee of Walmart, you are a 1099 contractor which means Walmart doesn't have to mess with payroll taxes. They don't have to provide you with any sort of benefits whatsoever. And you're responsible for all of the maintenance, uh, gas, everything on your vehicle to make those deliveries. There's also the subscription fee part of it. I saw another creator do a video where she did the math on if only 10% of Walmart's customer base signed up for the Walmart Plus subscription, they would make half a billion, with a B, dollars a year from that subscription service only, with only 10%. Now, if they were eventually able to transition fully to this delivery only model, that would force all of Walmart's customers to become Walmart Plus members. So that half a billion becomes multiple billion really fast. <laughs> Going to a fully online model like this would also eliminate all theft and shoplifting, which Walmart claims is what's behind all of this to begin with, if you believe it. I don't think this is something that's happening anytime soon. I think this is probably part of a five, 10, 15, 20 year plan. Um, but I do think that that's the road they're trying to take. I don't know, am I reaching? What do you think? I could see something like this happening for sure. Amazon is already starting to do it with their own delivery drivers. They have a program also called Spark and it allows you to be your own delivery driver for other people's packages. And I think it's kind of neat. It helps provide more jobs outside of the company, but it also eliminates jobs within the company because those people are getting paid more than what the drivers are and the drivers are getting paid, but they're not getting paid what employees would be in store. So the company is saving money overall and you're losing employees, but gaining 
contracted employees as well. I know plenty of older people that aren't going to do this. They're going to go to Walmart. They're going to look at all their products. They're going to make sure everything that they want is in their hands and in the cart. That's going to be a system that's going to last for a long time. And I don't think Walmart will ever push out of that. What I do think is they will eventually start replacing the internal employees at Walmart with robots. Once robots get good enough to actually manage the store, things like that within the next five or ten years probably that's something to look forward to what do you guys think about this i personally have nothing against the walmart app i think that it's extremely convenient for people that do not like to go to walmart i think that it's really convenient honestly even if you pay ten dollars a month you do save money in other places so what do you guys think about this? Do you think that it needs to be put down? Do you just hate Walmart altogether? Well, what's your thoughts exactly? This is why Freemasons refer to God as the great architect. Because God was working, God geometrizes. Sometimes Freemasons refer to God as the grand geometrician. Huh. That all of creation has this geometry inherent in it. And when you start looking, yeah, uh -huh. it's there. Yeah. You can see it or to the point where, no, you cannot dismiss this as coincidence anymore. Yeah, There's some kind of a pattern here. And I don't claim to ultimately know what it is, but I can show examples. And in my classes and lectures, and stuff, I show example after example after example in how there's a certain set of numbers that recur over and over and over again. And they're found on sacred structures all over the world. Yeah, I... I've seen a lot of documentaries covering the 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 pyramids. You yeah, know, the, have you the, seen the work of uh, Robert um, uh, Robert Edward Grant? She was looking down the well when she saw this. There, literally, somebody died in here. There is a body. Well, they're probably not anymore, but just bones. A body in the bottom. Look, no, I'm sure they probably see. can't even see the bottom here. Uh, let me turn my light on. You can see. Actually, it shows up pretty good on camera here. There is something at the bottom of that freaking well. As Rochelle shines the light at the bottom, we can see a pair of glowing eyes as well as the faint shape of her head lurking at the bottom of the hole, and it looks to be non-human. It is a common belief by many people that reptilian aliens and other unknown beings occupy the undergrounds of the earth. Perhaps this is what we are potentially seeing as we stare into the literal depths of despair. Let me know what you think. I mean, creepy hole nonetheless, but I don't know if that was glowing eyes looking up the hole. Honestly, it looked like maybe there was a piece of plastic down there and the light that she turned on was reflecting off of it. But I didn't think that those were eyes. I didn't see no movement or anything like that. I, I just think that it was a creepy hole with some trash down it personally. Now, if there are lizard people out there and things like that, I definitely believe they probably reside down underground somewhere, but not in the middle of nowhere, random hole sticking in the ground where they can look up out of it like that. That just makes no sense to me. This hole right here is suspicious as shit. And just for shiggles, let me tell you why. Originally next to this hole, there was a Russian research base. The Russians were there for three years before they said, oh, I'm out. And they gave it to Poland. Poland was there for two weeks before they said, mm -mm, not us. And they abandoned it. Then in 1979, some researchers decided they were going to be Billy Badass and they were going to go out there and stay. They made it about seven days before they had to be rescued. And why did they have to be rescued? Well, the official story is winter weather. I think this hole has a lot to do with it. Remember our boy Admiral Byrd, the one that flew over Antarctica and was actually summoned down into a hole by aliens and they told him that they were worried about the human race and the human race was going to blow up this earth and they just could not have that to go back to his leaders and make it stop. And he delivered that message and the government said, ha, okay, shut up. But anyways, this hole seems a whole lot like the one that he was flying over, except much, much smaller. And it's on the edge of the continent. I don't know, it's suspicious as shit. I wish that I could be the type of explorer that would be able to go to this hole 
and fly a drone in it or something to explore the inside of it because I'm curious about that as well. With the whole general bird thing also, I don't know if it was aliens that he said that he found, but they were giants within Hollow Earth type deal. And I find that also extremely fascinating. But there's a little bit of a disbelief in that story in general because if they were so advanced like he said they were with flying vehicles and buildings and different type of technologies, why would they not take themselves out or have a special android or something build to talk to people of power to let them know, hey, this is gonna get crazy if you keep going your way instead of taking a general making him sound crazy and they throw him in the loony bin because of it like I don't know that's why I don't really necessarily believe the story but it's still very interesting and I would like to explore that hole. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here. As always, if you are interested in any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.